in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good people, I'm sure you're well. It is Tuesday, the 11th day of May in the year of our Lord and Savior 2021. We are on day 60s in our novena with and for widows. And as I told you, this could be not good. This is the last day that you can join us in this novena. After this day, then you can consider yourself late. That means from tomorrow, then you can just start from day one. But all those of you who are joining today, you are picking up from where we are. You can do the, the five days that you have not done today, all of them in total, and then we journey together. But after the end of this day, <clears throat> Tuesday, 11th day of May, then you can only start all over again. Because the novena for 15 days, you are actually considered late after the 60th day. So, I hope that is clear. We did say that the devotions of this week are dedicated to the same, same novena that we are going through. Novena for widows. And a few things that we may need to pay attention to. And uh, yesterday and today... I am sharing with you, and especially the devotion targeted to the pastors, the priests, the bishops, the oracles, the prophets, prophetesses, mention them, all of them, all those leaders of various churches. And I am talking about the importance of making your church widows Frederick. And yesterday we went through a few things that we said and we realized that it is important that as church leaders we are able to give these women a chance to know that, uh, that they, aren't, they aren't harassed at home and then when they come to church they have no space or somebody to talk to them. Reason number three why it is important for you to make your church um, widows Frederick is because widows can be a powerful army of generosity and prayer in your church. They can be a powerful army of generosity and prayer in your church. He, he commands us for our sacrificial giving using the example of the widow who gave two mites. In Mark 12 verses 42 and 43. This is what we read. But a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins, worth only a few cents. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, Truly, I say to you, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. In Luke 2, 36-38, the prophetess Anna devoted her life to fasting and prayer. There was also a prophet Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Ashel. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then was a widow until she was 84 years. She never left the temple but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Two examples. So, when we neglect the widows in our churches, we are neglecting a whole army of prayer warriors and the women who can support with what they have, even if it is not their resources, they will be able to support with their own presence in prayers and helping. So there is no way that we are going to ignore them because they are part of our congregation. They are our daughters. They are our mothers. They are our sisters. And they are our friends. Number four, God blesses those who honor and serve widows. God blesses those who honor and serve widows. Deuteronomy 24 verse number 19 When you are harvesting in your field and you overlook a sheath, do not go back to get it. Leave it for the foreigner, the fatherless, the widow, so that 
the Lord your God may bless you in all the works of your hands. This is Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 29. No, th that is Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 19. Deuteronomy 14, verse 29. So that the Levites who have no allotment or inheritance of their own and the foreigners, the fatherless and the widows who live in your towns may come and eat and be satisfied so that the Lord your God may bless you in all the work of your hands. Please read Deuteronomy 24 verse 19 and 14 verse 29. I also want to read for you Job 29 verse 13. The one who was dying blessed me. I made the widow's heart sing. So those three verses, Deuteronomy 24, 19, Deuteronomy 14, 29, and Job 29 verse 13, tells us that there is blessing in taking care of these gracious women. You are blessed. You will be blessed as a pastor, as a priest, as whoever it is that you are in that church. So this is one way of getting us blessed. How? By taking care of the widows, those who have and those who do not have. And I want to say it yet again. Please let us not just be ministers for church ministers for those who have. Because the question is, if we only pay our attention to those who have, what happens to those who are financially struggling? That's a question that we need to think about. And we can't run away from this because it is our responsibility as church leaders. Number five, God warns against those who do not protect widows. Exodus 22 verses 21 to 24. Do not take advantage of the widow or the fatherless. If you do, and they cry out to me, I will certainly hear their cry. My anger will be aroused. Deuteronomy 27 verse 19. Cursed is anyone who withholds justice from the foreigner, the fatherless, and the widow. There is punishment Please hear me here. Hear me, hear me out. There is punishment for those of you who take advantage of widows. God listened to their cry. If you didn't know, please know. If not for anything else, if we are not pushed by godliness, then be pushed by the consequences of what would happen if you were to take advantage of them because God certainly will cry. I mean, we hear their cry. And I don't want to say, to hear that uh, we, you would be the recipient of the wrath of God simply because you never did what you are supposed to have done as a church minister. Again, it is important that we make our churches widows friendly. Number six, Ministering to widows demonstrates God's heart for the voiceless and powerless. In our churches, I have always talked about a few uh, people who, may, who, who are sometimes treated with some uh, disdain, if you like, or some indifference. Single mothers, always number one. The widows. And number three, uh, the poor. Sometimes we forget them because they, from them, uh, maybe uh, there are no structures that are laid to the extent that, that even in some churches, those categories of people may not even take positions of leadership. How many of our churches give positions of leadership to men and women of means because they have money? And the argument is they will support the church with their finances. That is okay. But that does not make that person a good leader. We don't get leaders because of what they have or what they do not have. We give them because they have got the ministry, the heart of service, servant leadership, that they will be able to serve God. 
It doesn't matter what they have or they do not have, but they will be able to do exactly that. So, if we demonstrate that we want to be part of what God asks us to do, then we must work very hard to see to it that these women, their voice is listened to. These men, their voices are listened to because not only just that women who have forgotten. When I talk about single mothers, I'm also talking about single fathers, sometimes whom we forget. In fact, very few people will hear, you hear them speak and then they mention the word single fathers because we think that maybe they do not exist. Single fathers exist, only that we deliberately choose to ignore them. Ignoring a certain group of people does not make them disappear, no. And then we cannot make the same mistake that the world is making. We can't. Number seven. Widows in all cultures, including ours, are marginalized. And because of that, the world cannot marginalize widows and we marginalize them. We can't. We must be different. What others are doing we must do it differently. If it is bad, we cannot perpetuate whatever bad the church is doing in church. If it is good, we even better it. Because there is a reason why they are in church. Because they know they are, they are protected, they are at home, and they are loved. So we must be a beacon of hope for them. And as I said on Monday, we must be a support system for them. Thank you. May the Almighty God bless you, Father. Son and the Holy Spirit. Keep it Tuesday. God bless you. Have a blessed day. Asante sana.